What up dudes, it's Gaz, and welcome back to another Warframe video. So today we're doing a double trouble with the new Ember skin and the new Ignis skin. Uh, it actually came with a bundle with the Sister Parvos, and you know, I had a, a Ember invigoration like a week ago, and I was messing with Ember, I hadn't played her since the rework, so I made a build for her. I never had a build for Ember, and you know, the Ignis Wraith is pretty good at those new galvanized mods and arcanes, so I thought it was time to just tackle both of these. So. Before we get into it, make sure you're subbed and all that stuff so you can keep up to date with the ch uh, channels on the video. Alright, so the new skin for Ember and the new Ignis Rice skin, it's from the bundle called the Pyraxis Bundle. And this skin is for basically flamethrowers, the Plasm skin. You might realize there's not many flamethrowers in the game, so it basically works in the Ignis and the Ignis Wraith. Maybe one other weapon I'm not remembering. If you do remember a weapon that this does work on that's not the Ignis and the Ignis Wraith, let me know in the comments down below because I really could not find one. Um, so yeah, basically with Ember, we're going to go over her abilities briefly uh, and, you know, talk about the build and some Helmuth stuff because I'm going to probably just Helmuth off for one, to be honest. Alright, so Ember's passive is why the Ignis Wraith is good with Ember. Since the Ignis Wraith is a flamethrower, uh, Ember's passive, 5% increased ability strength for every enemy that's on fire within 50 meters. So if you're using a flamethrower, the enemies around you should all be on fire if you're using it. Keep in mind, all of her abilities also set enemies on fire, so this is pretty easy to get a bunch of extra power strength. And this extra power strength is why we'll be using a certain helmet ability we'll get into in a second here. First ability is called Fireball. You throw out a Fireball, pretty simple. Uh, burns the enemies. You can hold down the button to make a like fire over time on the ground. And you can keep casting it to get increased damage over and over again. It's like a combo window, kind of. Her second ability, Immolation. This is the one that might be confusing to a lot of people, especially when combined with her three. So basically think about it that you, are, uh, you use this ability and your meter starts going up. You are like a boiling pot of water. Once you get to really, really high, like the, the boiling pot is like bubbling over the sides, that's when you need to start casting your three, maybe turn the heat down a little bit to blast your heat out in the area. Because if, if it's bubbling for too long, it's just going to ruin the stove and um, you're going to drain all your energy. So basically, you get a little heat meter on the side here. We'll, we'll quickly show that. If you use the two, heat meter starts at 40. This is going to affect the armor removal from your third ability. This third ability right here can remove enemy armor. When at base right down here, it's at 40%. It can go all the way up to 90, which will remove 100% of the enemy's armor when you're fully stacked up. Casting your other abilities, like your Fireball, or maybe even your 4, will make it so you're building up your heat meter even faster. This is something that was not very clear to me when I started uh, playing Ember. Keep in mind, this also affects the damage reduction this ability provides. Her second ability does provide damage reduction, and it will go up to 90% damage reduction uh, at max max fire. See, right, we're at max fire. The energy is going to start draining very aggressively the longer we're at max fire. So you want to make sure that you're sustaining that. If it, if it gets that high, start casting your three to drop it down. Um, that's why efficiency is pretty good, too. She's a very energy-hungry frame. But that, that fire blast we have released will remove enemy armor, which is pretty valuable. So yeah, damage reduction, drain per second, initial cast on drain. So pretty energy-hungry there. Power strength, will, you can't go above 90% uh, damage reduction on this thing, so it's whatever. Uh, fire blast, this is an ability she used to have before, but it's been changed a bunch. You, put, you press the button, loses the fire arrow or the fire ring around you, which will remove enemy armor, knock them down. And like I said, depending on how much heat meter you have, that changes how much armor they will remove. So the lowest they can remove with this build is 50%. The highest remove is 100%. So pretty good stuff there. Um, there's some augment mods for that will give you like healing if you hit enemies with it and stuff like that. And we've got Inferno, her fourth ability. This used to be World on Fire back in the day, which we got, you know it was a great ability. But we've got this now. You drop fire meteors on the enemies. And they will catch on fire, and they will have like a lingering fire effect on them. And uh, we have an augment mod we'll be using called Exothermic, which if the enemy dies while they're on fire from this ability, they have a chance to drop an energy orb, making it very easy to sustain your energy drain from your two and maybe some other stuff as well. So yeah, uh, basically initial damage, you know, burns enemies per second. Not nothing too crazy there. Um, it does have a, a soft line of sight check, so if you start jamming some power strength, you get a good chunk of extra damage out of that, especially for moving enemies armor. And for the Ignis Wraith, this, since it's a double video, we've got the Ignis Wraith uh, Viral Hunter Munitions build here. We also have a Corroso build here. Um, but you honestly, Galvanized Aptitude does not feel like it's really worth it on this weapon, so maybe don't run that build. Um, but yeah, so we've got Galvanized Chamber, a staple mod, Prime Band of the Grenier, making it so your heat and your viral proc, or your heat and your slash procs are doing more damage to the enemies. If you're fighting Grenier, if you're fighting the Corpus or whatever, switch that out for that. Um, Critical Delay for reducing our fire rate by giving us a bunch of extra crit chance, and then Vile Acceleration giving us a bunch of fire rate but minus the damage. Shouldn't be a big deal with Primary Merciless giving us 360% increased damage. 
And we've got uh, Vital Sense, Malignant Force, and Rhyme Rounds to make it so it's viral and heat. The heat procs, like we said, we want to set the enemies on fire for extra power strength. The, the heat procs also remove enemy armor. So there's lots of armor removal with this setup. Um, and lots of damage. Lots and lots of damage. So let's just quickly show how it's supposed to work in the similar outcome. We're actually going to we're gonna put on the build, too. So we've got the, um, the Gloom build here. So I've replaced Ember's first ability with Gloom from Sevagoth, Subsumed. Uh, so basically, it will slow the enemies down, uh, and depending how much strength you have, it'll slow them out even more. So this actually works out great. We've got the Exothermic Augment Mod for Ember's Force. So enemies ki killed while they're under the effects of the, the Fire, Meteor, Inferno ability have a chance to drop an Energy Orb. So that's really good because we're running Energy Conversion. Enemy, when you pick up an Energy Orb, your next ability will have 50% increased power strength. That's pretty good because, I mean, some of these other ones, like Blind Rage, will give you more technically, but it has a negative effect. It'll give you negative efficiency. We want efficiency because we have two drains now. We've got Gloom's Drain and we've got Immolation's Drain. So that might be a bit extreme for some people, especially if you don't if you don't have Arc and Energize, you might still not want to run this. So um, the rest of it is going to be Umbra Intensify, Umbra Vitality, gives you some more health pool, gives you some more power strength. We want to hit 270, like 9% power strength, I think it is. And with this build, you can actually get that as long as you set some enemies on fire. So um, you'll see at the top right, we have 115% increased ability strength currently with our Ember setup. So our Fire Meteors do a lot of damage. Um, our Gloom is basically max strength. Because the thing is, you want to cast it when you're at max strength uh, with all this fire, these Fire procs in your passive. That will make your Gloom max power. The enemies will be slowed down. And the funny thing is, as well is if you're using her third ability, the, the uh, Fire Blast... They'll get stunned and stuck in the stun animation for very long if you're using Gloom. Because Gloom slows enemies' animations down. They're basically just completely stun-locked around you. Um, it's very nice. Now, of course, if you wanted to do it more of an endurance setup, you wouldn't want to run health mods. You'd probably just run Rolling Guard and, like, Shield Getting Cheese. But I don't like that playstyle, personally. So we won't be recommending that in this video. So let's just go over the rest of the build. And we'll talk about the Ignis Wraith, too. Because as you can see in this gameplay, this is with no rev. The Ignis Wraith is doing real good. This is with hardly any armor removal on these enemies, too. Because um, the, the armor removal from the heat procs is all you're really getting in this footage right here. All right, so um, for the rest of the build on Ember, uh, now, Adaptation is rank 1 because look at the mod capacity. There's not really much mod capacity. I guess you could switch out Prime Flow for Normal Flow and maybe put Normal, uh, normal Continuity instead of Prime Continuity. Uh, but the thing is about uh, Adaptation is it will still get you to 90% damage reduction. It just takes longer to get there versus the max rank 1, which takes, like I think, like 9 bullets to get there. This will take like 18 bullets, which honestly is fine. Because we have damage reduction from our two and from this. Um, and we have premature footed to never get knocked over, which is pretty good for when you're surrounded by enemies. And the rest is just streamline and prime flow to make it so we don't run out of energy. We're running combat discipline because we're running gloom. We can kill enemies and heal. Uh, also, our teammates will become healed whenever they kill enemies. And it will help us proc Arcan Avenger, giving us increased crit chance for our weapons. And as far as the Ignis Wraith, we already went over the build. Um, but like I said, uh, I have tried the Corrosive Heat build as well. I did not like it anywhere near as much as the Viral Heat build, unfortunately. Uh, or the Viral Heat 100 Munitions build. I, I guess you technically could run Corrosive 100 Munitions, but it, it just doesn't feel right. We're running a Panzer Wolf of Phyla, to be fair. Um, but at the same time, like it, it's not going to always Viral proc everything. And as you can see, the Ignis Wraith is bad against the Acolytes. So when we do the weapon grades for the Ignis Wraith, it's got good horde clearing. Like, mob clearing is an A, I'd say. Like, very good. It's probably better than the Amprex because of the base heat. But the Acolyte clearing, I wouldn't even bother using the Acolyte, honestly. Just bring something like the Strofa. Bring something like the Glaive Prime. Bring a hard-hitting melee weapon to deal with the Acolyte because the Ignis Wraith can't really deal with the Acolyte very well. It, it, I mean, you technically will eventually kill them, but it will be a giant waste of your time. Just use something else. Uh, the max dash potential is a C. Honestly, kind of average. The proc amounts are low, but the procs it can push out are good. You know, viral and heat are good. Corrosive and heat are good. Um, yeah, that's that's basically it. So it overall is an above average weapon. C being average is above average, uh, especially because the AOE mob clearing potential is very good at A. Um, I wouldn't call it S because it's not like Kuva's art here where it's like clearing out the entire horde in one shot. Um, it's just, you know, it, it, it's reliable. It burns through the enemies. It's very easy to build this uh, if you have the mods, that is. So yeah, I'd recommend it. I'd recommend it for sure. Uh, I think you get it from like, uh, you know, you can get it from people from, in trade chat for free. It comes from Borrow sometimes. It might even drop in Railjack too nowadays. So there's like three ways to get this weapon. Let's quickly show it in the Simulacrum, uh, the Ember like gameplay setup basically. So we'll summon in these guys. Let's actually turn off. If we turn off damage, uh, turn off the pause AI, we might just die. So all right, so here's the playstyle. 
you want to basically make sure you pick up energy orb. So this up here is the energy orb, energy conversion. That's 50% power strength. It's also on our character. See that blue thing floating around us? That is the energy conversion showing us ready to, do, to go. And you want to catch a bunch of enemies on fire. That's about 50% extra power strength. We're basically at max gloom power right now. So that's when you would cast your gloom. Try not to kill all the enemies first. So that's going to be really high power strength gloom. These guys are slowed down by a lot. Now if we were to cast our knockdown ability from our three, it should take them quite a while to get back up from that. As you can see, they're basically stun locked. That, you, will, you will be able to kill them in time by the time they get up, honestly. So that's the general gist of it. You, of course, want to have your two on as well. So you can be doing extra, uh, getting extra damage reduction, getting your armor removal. She has 50% of her armor removed now. She's very easy to kill. Use your four to get your energy orbs back. And keep, continue to CC, continue to remove armor. Your, your, um, your fire meteors can actually kill enemies at decent, decently high levels, especially with all this extra power strength. Because you'll be getting energy conversion basically all the time with this setup. So, yeah, really, really fun. really recommend it. Um, as far as the fashion frame, someone sent this to me from Twitch chat, and I actually do like it a, a lot. We have the Pyraxis helmet, the Pyraxis skin, Wisp, Noble Animations, Attachments. We have the Prisma Edo chest plate, the Ember armor set that it comes with, Ventral Trickster Ephemera, and we've got the... I put this sign in on the Arc... Arcturcus Cyanana, it's Tenogen. And as far as the colors, we have the, um, this is going to be from Classic Saturated, bottom left corner for the gray. The black is from Fire, the bottom left. And the purple is from Hollow's Eve, one of the ones I use. And the emissive is going to be pink, apparently, from the Infested palette, top right. And what are these energy colors? We've got Eminence, basically the middle right of the Eminence Palette. All right, guys, hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, this loadout is pretty good, but like I said, you're probably going to want to bring a strofa or something to deal with the act. Like, we'll have a strofa video coming up pretty soon because I keep, keep forgetting to make it. Um, but yeah, overall, been having fun with Ember. Don't think she's top tier at all. Um, she's definitely not Saren tier, but she is really fun. Fire meteors look cool, and, you know, the armor removal is pretty powerful as well. So either way, guys, talk to you next time. Take it easy and peace.